Hey y'all, my name is Taylor. Welcome back to my channel and welcome if you are new. So today I'm going to be talking about the books that I read in February. And I know it's a little bit overdue. It's mid-March by now, but you know, wasn't able to do it until now. So here we are. Uh, and then on my channel, I feel like this is the final piece <laughs> to closing out the readathon that I did last month, which was the Once Upon a February readathon that I co-hosted with Celestria, Christy A. Cole, Kat from Cat Stories, Katie from Paperbacks and Ponytails, and Reese from The Running Songbird. So I've already told them very much thanks to them before, but I just cannot reiterate how much fun I had co-hosting with the, the readathon with them creating all the prompts, organizing everything, the two reading sprints we did. So I had a phenomenal time, really, really enjoyed creating and hosting my first ever readathon. So thank you to everybody who participated. I really enjoyed seeing y'all's posts about it, your videos, your discussions about it. So I really, really appreciate that y'all participated. And um, I liked seeing all y'all's range of um, how much you participated, like what statuses you got. So. If you haven't already, please let me know in the comments if you participated, how many books you read, how many prompts were you fulfilled, and what your status is. Um, so I'd love to hear that. But um, I also wanted to mention before I forgot, y'all, I love, look, look at this shirt. Like, I love it. Because, like, I wanted to mention it. I should have worn it on my um, uh, book haul <laughs> video I just did, but it was dirty. So um, I got it from a uh, Goodwill for a dollar twenty-five, and it is so true. There is no such thing as too many books. So, very hardly approve of my purchase myself. <laughs> I was very excited um, to find it for a dollar twenty-five. I was like, yes, another cool bookish T-shirt to add to my collection, and for only a dollar twenty-five. So that was a happy find for me. Anywho, while we're here, um, is the books I read. So. I will go over the synopses and my thoughts on them first, and then I'll go through what status I ended up with from my readathon. So, the first book I read, which I feel like was forever ago, because I started it like in January, and it took me forever to read. I don't know why it took me that long, but it is Fragile Designs by Colleen Coble, and this is a fairly new release. Um, it is a standalone, which has definite pointers for that. We appreciate a standalone because. Pretty much every book has has a series it's like i just want one that's just a standalone like can be one and done you know um so anyways this book is about carly i think her name's carly i can't remember anyways it's about a young woman who um her husband is she finds her husband um dead in their home and so it cuts to um nine months later she has had a baby and um, she finds this egg um, that she believes is a Fabergé egg. And so she's wondering if her husband was murdered in connection to the egg. Uh, so along the way, she encounters um, her neighbor. Um, and his name is Logan, I think. Um, and he is a detective homicide police officer. Um, so he's helping her find some some answers as well, and then there's also a family mystery as well that like where the egg came from and and um, because it was in, she was inherited she inherited it um, from her great grandmother I think it was um, so how did great grandma get a hold of this egg you know what is the backstory behind that so there's a little bit of a family mystery family drama in there as well um, so I rated this book four stars. It was very Colin Coble-esque. What I mean by that is I really enjoyed her Annie Peterson series before, and I don't think I liked this one as much, um, but she still managed to achieve a very complex story with lots of moving elements, lots of different things going on, and kind of weaving them all together and not losing the reader along the way. Like, you are intrigued the whole time, wanting to know what's happening. Um, it's very realistic, like lots of stuff. Um, lots of components, um, some real emotions, some realistic uh, events happening. So she is very, definitely a pro at writing a good story. Um, and uh, yeah, and the mystery was intriguing, both the family side of it and then also um, 
there are some other murders that happen. So finding out what's going on, it was very, very intriguing. Um, the only thing I'll say about it, well, I have two things. There, it is a romantic suspense. Um, so the romance with uh, between Carly and Logan, um, I don't know how I feel about it. Like their their relationship, they were cute together. Like I, I appreciate them as a couple, but their relationship previously, I was. I'm not sure how I feel about it uh, because Logan is the brother of a guy she used to date in high school. And I know that's probably not a big deal, but I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. I, like there's history between her and her brother or her and his brother. And um, I know it's like many years later, but I don't know. I just, I don't know how I feel about it. But anyways, not a huge deal. Um, the other thing is there were, it, it is marketed as a Christian book. And there are definitely some moments of prayer and um, asking God for help during times of need. Um, so uh, uh, that was good. But there were some elements of it that I was like, I don't know why this is in a Christian book. And specifically, I mean, Logan's brother, the guy that Carly used to date, um, he is described as kind of like a... Um, a womanizer. <laughs> he, he, he dates a lot of women, stays out late, says he went bar hopping. And there was a comment in there. I can't remember if it was Logan or Carly herself that said he's never going to change or even maybe even he said he's never going to change. And I'm like, I don't know if, if that guy, I think his name was Eric. I could be totally wrong. No, maybe that was her husband's name. I don't know his name, whatever his name is. <laughs> Um, I don't know if that, if he was a Christian, but Carly and Logan are, and I feel like, you know, you shouldn't have said that, like, he's never going to change. No, that's not up to you or him, really. I mean, yes, a little bit to him, but we don't need to put a box around what God is able to do, because if he is a Christian and he is a new creature, then yes, he would change his behaviors. Um, so I felt like that was a missed opportunity for some kind of like maybe intervention or some kind of commentary on how he could change his ways. I don't know. It was just me, but I felt like that was a missed opportunity in a Christian marketed book. Um, so for that reason, I gave it a one out of three for my Christian faith rating system. So it's more along the lines of a clean fiction, but there are elements of prayer and things like that in it. Number to the book, second book I read, uh, was, I have it to show you, um, Ariadri and the Legend of the Fire Rose by Christy A. Cole, and Christy is on booktube, I'll have her channel linked below, she was one of my co-hosts for the uh, Once Upon a Favorite Readathon as well, and I also interviewed her for this book, so I feel kind of weird talking about it now, because I feel like I've been talking about it for forever, but it is a really, really good book, I really enjoyed my time with it, I gave it five stars. Um, but what it is about is about Ariadri, and she um, ends up at this school for girls that's kind of in this woods, this whimsical woods, um, at this house, <laughs> a manor is what she, what they call it, um, for girls, and they're learning like self-defense and like um, how to hunt uh, evil magical creatures because they are becoming ever more prevalent and threatening um, the local population. Um, there's been some disappearances because of um, these creatures. Um, so Ariadri um, is uh, developing friendships along the way and um, going after these creatures and um, she comes across a fire rose which was really interesting and that's all I'll say about it because it, it's it's really it's really good and I think if you know a little bit just that much that that is enough <laughs> um, there are some things that kind of reveal itself um, if you want that to happen more naturally as you read the book so that's all I'll say about the synopsis but um, it was a very impressive debut novel like I didn't there were some parts that um, some of the wording like could have been changed a little bit in my opinion, but overall the, the messaging, like the moral story behind it, um, the, uh, it's not marketed as Christian, but Christy is a Christian and you can really see the elements of it in this, um, the allegorical elements. It's kind of like, uh, like Lord of the Rings, like Tolkien was a Christian, but he didn't write 
Lord of the Rings as a Christian novel, but you can really see the allegorical elements or the influence of Christianity in it. And that's kind of the same principle as this. Like, you can see what is symbolic of the Holy Spirit and um, gifts of the Spirit and um, allegory for the Satan as well. So it was very interesting and particularly like the last fourth of the book really, really picks up and you can't put it down. And it does end on a little bit of a cliffhanger. Not terrible. It's not like my wrench my heart out type of cliffhanger, but you still want to know what's going to happen. Um, and it is part of the first book um, in a four book series. And um, Christy just released her video, her last video before she has a baby. So um, we will accept it whenever she is able to get it out. Um, but yeah, I am excited to, to get to book two whenever it is released. So that's that one. And the third book I read for um, February is The Letter Tree by Rachel Fordham. And this was actually a buddy read with Anne over In Search of Wonder. I really enjoyed talking with her about this book. Um, she very graciously um, gave me grace <laughs> because it took forever to get to it because my daughter was sick. So I really appreciate her sticking with me and, and um you know, being forgiving of that. <laughs> but anyways, um, so the letter tree is about, well, it is kind of a mashup of if you've got mail and Romeo and Juliet. Um, there are two people that were friends as kids and then something happened to their parents, um, shoe factory company. Um, and so they split. And so now there is a huge rivalry going on between each of their father's shoe companies. Um, and so as part of that split, they had to end their friendship, make no contact. They are kind of villainized against each other. They're the enemy. And, um, so unbeknownst to them, <laughs> they, uh, happen to start a, um, a, uh, letter, re writing letter relationship through this letter tree. They stick letters in there. Um, and talk back and forth to each other, but they don't know who each other, it, who, who the other person is. Um, and so now they are young adults, adults, like in their early twenties, I think. Um, and so, uh, yeah, it is the process of them finding out who the other is. And that is the, you got mail portion of the story. So, um, I rated it three and a half stars. Um, I, I was kind of a little bit disappointed, um, because I didn't realize that it is published by Thomas Nelson until like halfway through the book. Cause I was waiting and waiting and waiting for them to bring up God and prayer and Christianity and all that. And they never did. And there was one mention of what, I think it was the guy. And he's like, I think there's a higher power. And I was like, what? Like, <laughs> why would you not say God? So, um, so that was like, oh, is this written by Thomas Nelson? Um, so I went and looked it up. I was like, oh, of course it is. Cause like Thomas Nelson, um, was bought out by Harper Collins and they say Harper Collins Christian division, but Thomas Nelson is literally Christian. No, not Christian clean fiction books. Um, and because they never like recently once, since they got bought out, they never bring up explicitly Christian elements. Like it's clean, you know, um, maybe prayer might be mentioned like really basic mentions of Christianity, but not like a true Christian fiction book. Um, so that was a little disappointing because I know Rachel Fordham is capable of writing Christian fiction books. And I just felt like that was a huge missed opportunity. Like there was messaging, like the moral of the story, the underlying message of the story was follow your heart. And, you know, it's not really a Christian message. You know, it should be let the Lord guide you, you know, good Lord in prayer, you know, stuff like that, where allowing each other as a couple to grow stronger and faith together, you know, that's something like that. Um, so the messaging was just a bit off. Um, and then, uh, some of the, <laughs> there was a little bit of a mystery, like a slight side mystery going on. Um, and the, uh, resolution of that was very convenient, um, that's all I'll say, but it was just like, I don't know if this is 
this is as realistic, if this would hold up in the court of law, you know, like, would this happen this way? Anyways, it was still a cute story. Um, there was a part about the Buffalo Zoo in it, um, the female main character. I'm horrible with names. I can't remember any of these characters' names. Um, <laughs> she was very interested in um, animal care and was, like, thinking about becoming a veterinarian, but her father wouldn't, wouldn't agree to it. It wasn't, like, part of the times, because this is, like, early 1900s or something. Um, so there was parts of her, like, uh, volunteering at the zoo and they would meet up at the zoo and yada yada so that was really interesting there's also a part in there about Niagara Falls which I've been so I was like oh I know what, what they're talking about that's cool um so it was it was cute but it still I felt like there was um missed opportunities and it just there were some things that I could have thought would have been better so anyways it was interesting to read it with Anne, and I'm really glad I read it with her because she and I had basically the exact same thoughts on it, which is very interesting because I feel like everybody else who's talked about it has always given it five stars. And I was like, is there something wrong with me? Like, why do I, I don't feel that way. I don't feel like it's that five star level book. Um, so it was nice to have some solidarity with, with my buddy read. So the fourth book I read was also a buddy read, but with more people. So that book is Hunting Sirens by Mary Meckham. And this is book two um, to Becoming Hook. And this particular book is a gender flipped retelling of The Little Mermaid. So um, the woman is now in the prince's position, but she's a siren hunter. And then the male character is the merman or siren rather. In this story. Um, so I read this with Katie over paper, paperbacks and ponytails, um, Celestria, Reese from the Writing Songbird, and Christy A. Cole. So we read this together and that was fun. Um, I flew through this. It was like Mary Beckham is a very talented author. She really grips your attention and just you just fly through her books. Um, so I really love her as an author. She is a clean fiction author. Um, and yeah, it was a really good time. So this story is Treva. She is actually a deaf character. And this is the first, I think, not to my knowledge, uh, character that I've read who's had, like a main character, who's had a um, specific disability, much less uh, a deaf character. I've I know I've never read a deaf character. I just don't know if I read a main character who has a disability before. Um, so it was fun. I really enjoyed it. Um, she has a preface in the beginning, um, kind of explaining a little bit about deaf people and their culture and some, some things you should know before you read it. So I really appreciated that because some of that stuff I didn't know. Um, but she is deaf. So she is basically the only one qualified um, to go after sirens because sirens have been basically hunting humans. Obviously, you know, the story about sirens where they sing and they, and they take people to their death, they drown them. Um, but they are actually encroaching more on Treva's Island and taking people from the shore. So some kids are playing on, on the shoreline and sirens get them too. So her, her people on the on this island are starving because trade routes have been closed because nobody can go out because they're going to get attacked by sirens um and you know they're being killed and so she uh, is also a blacksmith a weapons creator and um so she decides she's the only one who is capable of going out and facing these sirens and trying to stop them by hunting them down and killing them basically because they are you know she views them as animals ki killing her people um so it's kind of like a, sur a survival thing that she's doing a su sacrificing survival thing to save her people so she is going out hunting uh sirens and um so her ship gets attacked and um something saves her and yeah so I'll leave it there. Um, you can kind of guess maybe a little bit of the plot line from, from The Little Mermaid. But um, yeah, it was very, very good. Um, there was a twist in there that I was not expecting. Mary Meckham is really good at plot twists. <laughs> um, so I wasn't entirely surprised 
based on her, but what it was, I was surprised. Um, and then, um, so what I'll say as far as content wise, because it is technically clean. Um, but if you are particular about, um, physical touch, um, in, in your books, like reading details about it, because, um, there were some kiss scenes that were a little bit, a little tiny bit more detailed than I personally would like to see, but it didn't entirely cross the line for me because if it did, I would have DNF'd it. But if you're particular about that, maybe I would go in with caution about it or maybe not even read it at all. Um, it's definitely not the worst I've ever read by any stretch of the imagination, but it goes a little bit further than what I would like. And if you don't like that, maybe it might make you uncomfortable. I don't know. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was just like, there was one scene where she got injured on her side and he was like helping her with applying medicine. His hand lingered too long. Something like that. I was like, Oh, do we really need to do that? Um, but it was, it was okay. Like I handled it fine. Um, I think that was it. That's all I wanted to say about that one. I enjoyed it. I would recommend it. Uh, and then I also read Married at Sunrise by Leoloha Humphreys. And this is a King Thrushbeard retelling. And um, this, I never read a King Thrushbeard retelling. I didn't even know existed until other people started talking about this. Um, I rated this three stars. Um, a lot of my friends rave about this book and gave it five stars. So I am in the minority in this opinion, <laughs> but, um, here are my, well, let me tell you the synopsis and then my thoughts on it. So this is about, uh, what is her name? Hey, Lonnie. And she is, uh, she's known as the, the, uh, shark princess, I think is what, what, what what they're called, what they call her. Um, because she is very abrasive. She's very rude. She's mean. She has kind of a, has a reputation of firing a lot of servants and, and just being all around just kind of nasty to deal with. Um, but, uh, she is of marriageable age and her brother is the king. So he's trying to create, uh, marriage alliances. And she's like, nope, nope, nope. I'm not marrying any of these guys. So eventually he gets fed up and was like, the next person that walks through this door, you're going to marry. So she ends up marrying this guy um, that is Captain Jax, and he is a pirate hunter in his past. Um, so he is on a mission to try and, um, well, I'm not going to say the mission in case that's a spoiler, but he, he's on a mission. So she uh, marries him, and um, She's forced to marry him, basically. Uh, signs a con Her brother signs a contract creating the marriage alliance. And so she joins him on his ship to do this mission. And um, it's very... If you like pirates and, like, seafaring adventures and romance, you would like this book. Um, and if you can't tell by the cover, it's very, very pretty. It has like feelings of like Hawaii, like the tropical island type feel, like the swing in the ocean, because she actually um, really enjoys observing sharks. And actually the first scene in the book is her observing, I think it's a tiger shark maybe. Um, so that was really cool. I loved the world building in this, like picturing this picturesque, island world where there's different islands. There's, there's actually, um, a map in the beginning showing you all the different, um, islands, but, um, just the scenery and the descriptions of it, um, was very, very interesting. And that was my favorite part of the book. The romance was not my cup of tea. Um, and that's primarily because I didn't entirely like, um, either of the two main characters. For me, I felt like they were the same character repeated, like their, um, motivations and, uh, what flaws they had. And I, I just felt like they were the same thing. Um, so that's just my interpretation of it. Like I said, I'm the minority opinion. Um, also there are an excessive amount of references to eye rolling in this book. Like 
I can handle a couple. Like, I understand, like, her character, especially in the beginning when she's supposed to be, like, this very difficult-to-handle person. I can understand some eye-rolling, but, I mean, it was a lot, and I really noticed it, um, and other characters did it, too. I was like, what is the fascination with eye-rolling? I know I do it a lot, but, like, I don't want to read about it, like, ten times. So, <laughs> that was just a nitpicky little thing that I noticed. Um, but I will say, since I enjoyed the world building so much... I will return to this series. I just didn't really mesh well with this particular couple. The last book I read for February was The Horse and His Boy by C.S. Lewis. And this is the third book in the Chronicles of Narnia. If I'm doing the chronological version. So anyways, um, this book is very different compared to the other two. Um, and that's because most of it doesn't take place in Narnia. Um, this book is about Shasta. He is, um, a little boy who was taken in by this man, um, that is not so nice to him. Um, he kind of takes advantage of, advantage of him, uses him for, like, work and stuff like that, and, um, beats him when he's not happy. So, he's in this sad, unfortunate place, um, but he runs into this talking horse and um together they decide to leave and head towards narnia so it's the journey to get to narnia and um yeah it was it was really cute um like it was a sweet story like the message behind it and all that and you get to see glimpses of the um the kings and queens of narnia so edmund Lucy, Susan, and Peter. You see hints of them in here as well. And that was really nice to see them in their roles in, in Narnia as kings and queens um, before they go back to our world. Um, and then, um, yeah, it was just really sweet. And I, there, Aslan is in this book and his character is expounded upon. And I just love seeing him and because he's such a picture of Jesus and like how, how he interacts with people and his explanations of things and this message of he's been there the whole time that was just that was great I really really enjoyed that it was it was amusing to see what he did in some situations um but also the gravity of of who he is meant to um uh parallel I guess you could say like he is a picture of a Jesus character and just you know just reminds you of who Jesus is. And so that, I really, really appreciated that. Um, so I gave this book four stars. Really enjoyed it. So those were all the books I read. I read six books. And I managed, here's the chart um, for the Once Upon a February Readathon. I managed to fulfill all 12 prompts. So I am a fairy godmother. <laughs> so I was very excited. Like, yay, as the uh, readathon creator, I really need to get fairy godmother status. So yay, I did. Um, but I'll go ahead and tell you what prompts I fulfilled. So red rose in the cover, um, was married at sunrise. So there's some red, red roses here. My books are falling. Um, and then for, uh, ginger flipped retelling, hunting sirens, uh, and then Mary Min, a male main character, was the horse and his boy. Uh, evil stepmother, which has a notorious villain in it. Um, I'm not going to tell you who it is, but there is a notorious villain in it. Um, so Ariadri in the Legends of Fire Rose. Uh, Pixie Dust was a magical creature, so sirens and hunting sirens. Um, Midnight, the last to read a book, was The Letter Tree. Bluebeard, a lesser known retelling. Um, thrush beard, y'all. Had no idea. Mary to Sunrise. Uh, wolf, an animal integral to the plot. And that's pretty, that was pretty easy. That's why I picked this one, honestly. Um, so the horse and his, the horse and his boy by C.S. Lewis. And let's see, musical voice, a book that incorporates music or singing. That would be Hunting Sirens. Uh, Long Locks, a girl with long hair, married at sunrise. Snow Queen on a quest. I did Hunting Sirens for that one. And Thumbelina, a short book, which would be The Horse and His Boy because it is less than 250 pages. So, yay, fairy godmother status. So, oh, I did want to mention too um, what I fulfilled for the challenges. And, uh, well, I guess they're all challenges or um, for uh, some of the other booktubers that I'm doing. So, 
for Oshina's Christian Romance Reading Challenge, I did the historical prompt, which was the letter tree. And then for Chantel's Read Your Bookshelf Challenge, which technically I'm behind on because I didn't do <laughs> January's just yet. But um, I did uh, the Doyle. I'm trying to do the Doyle track, so I'm going to go back and do January later. But um, for February, I did read a book under 250 pages, which that was The Horse and His Boy. And then, let's see, flip to all the pages. Uh, Jane reads Christian Fiction Challenge. Um, I swapped out because um, you can do a bonus prompt instead of the the um, prompt because for February, the original one was a past favorite and I don't really reread re too much. Um, so I switched that out with favorite author and that one, um, Colin Coble is, is favorite author. So I did Fragile Designs for that one. And then the last one is Katie's um, Read Around the world -athon. I did, um, it was supposed to be a mode of transport on the cover. And I really kind of stretched this one out a little bit. Um, the letter tree has has an elephant on the cover. So I used, I used that one. Um, but yeah, so yay, I am moving around along with those readathons, except for Chantel's. I'm going to have to get on the ball with that one. But I think I can catch up pretty quickly. So Anyways, thank you all so much for watching. I feel like I was very scattered in this video, <laughs> but let me know what y'all read for February. Again, let me know your details for the Once Upon a Favorite Readathon if you did it, and um, I'll see you in the next video. Bye, y'all.